an archipelago's dawn, the first Filipinos. The Philippine archipelago, a scattered tapestry of over 7,000 islands, boasts a rich history stretching back millennia. Long before the arrival of European powers, the islands were alive with diverse cultures. These were the descendants of the Austronesians, skilled seafarers who embarked on an incredible journey across the seas. They arrived from mainland Southeast Asia navigating vast distances in their outrigger canoes. These early Filipinos were not a homogenous group. They were comprised of various tribes and ethno-linguistic groups. Each group had unique customs, beliefs, and social structures. The arrival of the Austronesians marked the beginning of a distinct Filipino identity. Their legacy is visible in languages, traditions, and cultural practices that endure to this day. Collision of Worlds Spanish Colonization and the Stand of Lapu-Lapu The arrival of Ferdinand Magellan in 1521 marked a turning point in Philippine history. Magellan's expedition claimed the Philippines for Spain. He encountered fierce resistance from Lapu-Lapu on the island of Mactan. I am Lapu-Lapu, a Datu of Mactan. I refuse to submit to Spanish rule. Lapu-Lapu and his warriors fought bravely, ultimately defeating Magellan. Magellan was killed, a testament to Filipino resistance. Magellan, clad in heavy armor, watched in disbelief. His initial attack had been met with fierce resistance, not the swift surrender he'd anticipated. The muskets, so effective in other conquests, seemed to have little impact on the nimble warriors. Their knowledge of the terrain was proving to be a formidable advantage. He had underestimated these islanders, dismissing them as mere savages. Now he realized his grave error. His armor, a symbol of European might, was becoming a cumbersome burden in the humid tropical heat and the difficult terrain. His movements were hampered, slowing him down. Lapu-Lapu, a seasoned warrior, saw the Spaniards struggle. He rallied his men, their battle cries echoing across the water. Their arrows, tipped with poison, rained down on the invaders, finding gaps in their armor. They pressed their advantage, their knowledge of the terrain and their fighting style proving superior. Magellan, realizing the tide was turning, ordered his men to burn the village. He hoped to demoralize the islanders by destroying their homes. The flames rose, consuming the huts, but the islanders' resolve did not waver. They were fighting for something far greater than property. They were fighting for their freedom. Section five, face to face, a clash of titans. The battle raged, a chaotic dance of steel and fury. Then, amidst the chaos, two figures emerged, their destinies intertwined. Magellan, his armor weighing him down, found himself face to face with Lapu-Lapu. The two leaders representing two different worlds clashed in a furious duel. Their fighting styles were a study in contrasts. Magellan, weighed down by his armor, relied on brute force and European swordsmanship. Lapu-Lapu, agile and swift, moved with the grace of a seasoned warrior, his campilan a blur as he attacked. He fought not just with strength, but with the spirit of his ancestors, the spirit of his land. Seeds of nationalism, the pen mightier than the sword, Jose Rizal. Section six. Despite centuries of Spanish rule, the spirit of resistance never truly died in the Filipino people. Jose Rizal, a writer, doctor, and polymath, became a symbol of Filipino nationalism. I am Jose Rizal born into an affluent family in Laguna. From a young age, I excelled in my studies, traveling to Europe to further my education. Rizal's weapon of choice was not the sword, but the pen. He penned two novels, Noli Me Tangere and El Filibusterismo, exposing Spanish injustices. His writing sparked national consciousness, inspiring Filipinos to fight for their rights. cry of the Katipunan Bonifacio's revolution. While Rizal advocated for peaceful reforms, another group of Filipinos believed that armed struggle was the only path to freedom. This belief gave birth to the Katipunan, a secret revolutionary society founded by Andres Bonifacio. I am Andres Bonifacio, a warehouse worker and self-taught intellectual. Unlike the affluent Rizal, I come from a humble background. The Katipunan grew rapidly, spreading its message of freedom through secret meetings and coded messages. Its members, known as Katipuneros, came from all walks of life, united by their desire for a free Philippines. In August 1896, the Katipunan's plans for an uprising were discovered by the Spanish authorities. Forced into action, Bonifacio and his followers tore up their cedulas, community tax certificates, in an act of defiance known as the Cry of Pugad Lawan. This event marked the beginning of the Philippine Revolution, a bloody struggle that would test the limits of Filipino courage and determination. 
The Philippine Revolution fueled by Bonifacio's fervor and the Katipunan's resolve raged across the archipelago. Another key figure emerged during this tumultuous period, Emilio Aguinaldo. A skilled military strategist and leader, Aguinaldo hailed from Cavite, a province known for its resistance against Spain. Under my leadership, the revolutionary forces won a series of victories against the Spanish. As the revolution gained momentum, Spain found itself embroiled in another conflict, the Spanish-American War. The United States, seeking to expand its influence in Asia, sided with us, the Filipino revolutionaries, promising support in our fight for independence. With American assistance, the Filipinos cornered the Spanish forces in Manila. In June 1898, I proclaimed Philippine independence from Spain, raising the Philippine flag for the first time. However, the Filipinos' hope for true independence was short-lived. The Treaty of Paris, signed by Spain and the United States, ceded the Philippines to America, sparking the Philippine-American War. Section 6. A Nation Forged in Fire. World War II and the Legacy of Resistance. The Philippine-American War ended in 1902 with Aguinaldo's capture. The Philippines, once a colony of Spain, now found itself under American rule. The United States embarked on a program of benevolent assimilation, introducing American education, government, and culture. However, the desire for true independence never truly faded. Filipinos continued to fight for self-determination, albeit through peaceful means. In 1941, World War II reached Philippine shores. The Japanese Empire, seeking to control strategic resources in Southeast Asia, invaded the Philippines. Despite being ill-equipped and outnumbered, Filipino and American forces fought valiantly against the Japanese. They battled side by side in places like Bataan and Corregidor, displaying immense courage and resilience. Section 7, Independence and Beyond, the Modern Philippines. After years of brutal fighting, the tide of World War II turned. The Allied forces led by General Douglas MacArthur liberated the Philippines from Japanese control. On July 4, 1946, the Philippines finally achieved its long-sought independence. This historic moment marked the birth of the Republic of the Philippines, fulfilling the dreams of generations who had fought and died for freedom. The road ahead was not easy. Recovering from the devastation of war and rebuilding a nation from the ground up was a daunting task. The Philippines faced numerous challenges, poverty, political instability, and natural disasters. Despite these obstacles, the Filipino people persevered. They rebuilt their lives and their nation, driven by the same resilience and determination that had seen them through centuries of adversity. The Philippines today is a vibrant democracy, a melting pot of cultures and a testament to the indomitable spirit of its people. Section 8. Echoes of the Past, Whispers of the Future, The Unbreakable Spirit. The story of the Philippines is one of resilience, courage, and an unwavering desire for freedom. From the early Austronesian settlers who navigated vast seas to the modern-day Filipinos who continue to strive for a better future, the Filipino spirit has remained unbroken. It is a spirit forged in the crucible of colonization, war, and natural disasters, yet tempered with compassion, creativity, and an unyielding belief in the power of hope. The echoes of the past resonate in the present. The legacy of Lapu-Lapu's defiance, Rizal's intellectual prowess, Bonifacio's revolutionary zeal, and Aguinaldo's leadership continue to inspire generations of Filipinos. These heroes, though belonging to different eras and advocating different methods, shared a common goal, the betterment of their people and the liberation of their nation. Section 9. A Tapestry of Resilience, Honoring the Legacy. The story of the Philippines is not just a narrative of the past, it is a living testament to the enduring spirit of its people. It is a story woven into the very fabric of Filipino society, reflected in their art, music, literature, and everyday lives. It is a story that continues to unfold, each generation adding its own verse to the grand narrative of the Filipino people. As we reflect on the journey of the Philippines from its origins to its modern-day heroes, we are reminded of the importance of resilience, courage, and unity. These values, passed down through generations, serve as guiding principles for navigating the complexities of the present and building a brighter future. The journey of the Philippines is far from over, and the best chapters are yet to be written.